In what comes as no shock to anyone who's kind of been following uh, review site Rotten Tomatoes for a number of years, we now actually have a new report claiming that a Hollywood PR firm named Bunker 15 has actually been paying for positive reviews to manipulate Rotten Tomato scores of bad movies. Not only do we have this report, but the actual company, Bunker 15, appears to have confirmed it while also trying to dismiss it. Let's get into this here. Uh, website Vulture is the one that uncovered or kind of has this report. Lane Brown and Luke Winky over there. According to the pair's report, the PR company in question, Bunker 15, whose official website boasts that the company offers innovative media planning, editorial support, social media advertisement, and automated promotional engineering to help your film reach top critics and influencers, has regularly been hired by a number of small to medium-sized films to save their reputations by artificially boosting their respective Rotten Tomatoes scores. Detailing their activities, Brown and Winky explained, while most film PR companies aim to get the attention of critics from top publications, Bunker 15 takes a more bottom-up approach, recruiting obscure, often self-published critics who are nevertheless part of the pool tracked by Rotten Tomatoes. The most damning aspect of this operation, however, is that per several critics uh, that they spoke to, the PR firm, quote, pays them $50 or more for each review, a practice which explicitly violates Rotten Tomatoes' own expectation that both applicants and improved critics honor journalistic integrity and observe ethical behavior. Impressed by Vulture on this accusation, the review aggregator, Rotten Tomatoes, elaborated on their above rule and affirmed that they do not allow, quote, reviewing based on a financial incentive. Well, it seems that they were, <laughs> given the fact that uh, Bunker 15 was paying people to review movies. And specifically, they uh, shared that they were paying people to review the 2018 film Ophelia. Um, so faced with uh, the, the movie, I guess, got really bad reviews. 46% Rotten Tomatoes score across 13 critics after it was uh, had an early screening. Um, faced with this, apparently the the production company enlisted Bunker 15 to save the film from going down in history as yet another gender swapped misfire to this end. The PR, PR firm reached uh, proceeded to reach out to various critics who fit their above criteria and encourage them to leave the Ridley led film, a positive review. Uh, so uh, it's a Sundance film. And the feeling is that it's been treated a bit harshly by some critics. I'm sure sky high expectations were the culprit. So the teams involved feel like it would benefit from more input from different critics wrote Bunker 15 to one critic who shared that excerpt with them from Vulture. So this is a critic who got an email from Bunker requesting them to write a positive review for Ophelia and then shared it with Vulture. In turn, the critic in inquired as to what would happen if he earnestly disliked the film, to which Bunker 15 replied that it was standard practice for super nice reviewers, and there are more critics like this than I expected, to refrain from publishing their negative opinions on their main outlets and instead delegate them to a smaller blog that Rotten Tomatoes never sees. Uh, indeed, trying to manipulate people that are just going and looking at that Rotten Tomatoes score, believing that that is some kind of indicator of a film's quality rather than maybe looking at what the actual reviewers are saying. So they're just trying to be like, if you're going to be a, a negative review, don't even post it on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> very interesting there. Uh, and then uh, I think it's a very cool thing to do, the Bunker 15 employee added. I, I don't think that's a very cool thing to do. You should be honest, uh, have some integrity, and be true to what you actually think and share your opinion. Um, and that's why we call these people shills, right? Because they are literally shilling. Unsurprisingly, given the current state of media criticism and integrity, it appears uh, these efforts paid off for Ophelia, as Brown and Winky ultimately found that between October 2018 and January 2019, Rotten Tomatoes added eight reviews to Ophelia's score. Seven were favorable, and most came from critics who, have re who had reviewed at least one other Bunker 15 movie. Uh, I also discovered another negative review of Ophelia from this period that was not counted by Rotten Tomatoes by a writer whose positive reviews of other Bun Bunker 15 films have been recorded by the aggregator. Ophelia climbed the tomato meter to 62%, flipping from rotten to fresh. The next month, the distributor IFC Films announced that it had acquired Ophelia for release in the U U.S. So it looks like uh, Vulture is trying to imply that by manipulating the review score, they were actually able to get the film distributed into the U.S. by IFC Films. So it actually led to significant financial gains by manipulating these review scores. That, at least that seems to be what they are heavily implying there. Further, one writer who left the film a negative review informed Vulture's reporting team that he was actually contacted by Bunker 15 in an effort to have him flip his review. If you give it a barely overall positive, then I do know the editors at Rotten Tomatoes and can get it switched. 
a Bunker 15 employee promised the reviewer. So it sounds like they're actually working with Rotten Tomatoes as well. And Rotten Tomatoes is in on it. Again, that would that makes sense, right? Rotten Tomatoes is run by Fandango, which is run which is owned, I think, by a couple of the movie studios. So they want to get people into theaters and want people to watch those movies, uh, sell those tickets because it generates revenue for them. Press for comment on Vulture's reporting. The responses from the main entities involved range from silence to adamant denial. Uh, Covert Media, uh, Ophelia's production company, did not respond to a request. Uh, but uh, Rotten Tomatoes did delist a number of Bunker 15 movies from its website and sent a warning to writers who reviewed them. Uh, we take the integrity of our score seriously and do not tolerate any attempts to manipulate them, Rotten Tomatoes told Brown. We have a dedicated team who monitors our platforms regularly and thoroughly investigates and resolves any suspicious activity. That's really interesting because we just had the, the this Bunker 15 employee assert that he was working with Rotten Tomatoes editors in order to switch reviews. And now they're <laughs> trying, they realize that their site integrity is at risk and they're trying to deny all of that. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, despite their denial, they have delisted Ophelia from their website, which I think that that shows you that uh, <laughs> that this is indeed was happening. And it's probably been happening at a much more wide spread scale than just this Ophelia movie. There's probably numerous, numerous films. And I would wager it's not just the um, the smaller films like Ophelia. I, you know that they're doing this for the bigger films as well, especially the bigger films, because that's where they're really probably getting in that big money uh, at the at the box office there. And then we have Bunker 15 founder Daniel Harlow. He said uh, to the Browns claims that you are really reaching there, but then he literally admits that the accusations are true, right? He says, we have thousands of writers in our distribution list. A small handful have set up a specific system where filmmakers can sponsor or pay to have them review a film. So he's confirming that they are indeed paying reviewers to pay for a review, right? Um, okay. Like, so if you're doing that, it's not hard for one to believe that you're paying other people that aren't part of that system either. But this stuff isn't uh, out of the ordinary. Like, we've been covering this for a couple of years now. You go back to March 2019, you had Sci-Fi Wire's Danny Roth actually admit to creating positive reviews in order to maintain access uh, while discussing Captain Marvel's uh, Rotten Tomatoes controversy. Uh, back then, he appeared on this podcast, Who Won the Week?, and he basically admitted that uh, they give positive reviews in order to maintain access. He says, here's the actual reality. Here's where we actually are in the industry. If you want to talk about, quote, access media, every single person that wants to have access to things early, that wants to get access uh, to things so that traffic is drawn to their site, will on occasion. Everybody at this podcast, everybody in our industry occasionally has to play softball, occasionally has to look the other way a little bit. Everybody has to do it in the sense that I hated a movie, but I won't say that I hated a movie. Or an actor behaved a sort of way, and you don't want to put it out there that that happened. And then you had another guy, Horn, who is the uh, who was at least a contributing editor for Sci-Fi Wire at the time. She said, I think, I think it's a... Uh, I think she's a woman, if I recall correctly. Right, because you might not get the next review. And then Roth says, to some degree, everybody in the industry that is part of this quote-unquote access media has to decide which battles they want to pick, which of the ones where my voice is the one that has to get said. So we've been covering this for a while. They were obviously blackmailing these people, or at least making them, socially pressuring them to think that in order to get access, they would have to give positive reviews. Now we are real, real, realizing that maybe people kind of expose that, and they're have to actually having to pay people uh, to get that reviews. Or maybe the reviewers figured out like, hey, uh, our traffic to the website isn't generating as much from this review. We need to generate some other revenue in order to make up for that loss. So you need to start paying us now if you really want that review. And they realized that maybe they had a little bit more of the leverage, uh, especially uh, considering now when you're seeing the decline of, of uh, superhero films across the board. Not only do we have this, but if you go back to uh, January 2020, uh, YouTuber Sheila Allen actually did a scrape of audience scores for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, she scraped 6,000 reviews from quote-unquote verified reviewers on Rotten Tomatoes and noticed that not only had the film's audience review score remained unchanged from the 86% and accrued after 6,231 reviews despite receiving over 63,000 additional reviews, but many of the reviews repeated generic phrases without contributing any meaningful commentary. You can watch her video here, but this is kind of her takeaways. 
Uh, from that, uh, you saw some of these repeated phrases here. Way to end the saga. Great way to end the uh, end, end to the si Skywalker saga. Fitting end. A great ending to the saga uh, being repeated kind of multiple times, indicating that potentially there were bots being used and that the film studios or their uh, PR firms that they had contracted were manipulating these reviews to boost the audience score as well. In fact, I would post it to Twitter. I don't have it on hand here. Uh, just this, just this week on Monday, we already were seeing massive amounts, or not maybe massive, but there was 46 positive reviews for Ahsoka episode four, despite the film or despite that episode not even being available to be viewed yet on Disney Plus. So you had people already uh, giving um, positive review, like 10, 10 out of 10 positives on IMDb before they had even released the show. And so people were already giving it a 10 out of 10 w without having any way of ever w having watched it. So clearly there are massive shenanigans happening and it's just not at Rotten Tomatoes. It's happening at IMDb as well. But here, just to uh, further emphasize this with Rise of Skywalker, uh, the film score remained at 86% despite an additional 13,000 verified audience reviews having been submitted to Rotten Tomatoes. Many of the recent reviews, some posted as little as five hours prior to the writing of this article, have provided similarly vague one-sentence recommendations, which uh, to me indicates that, yeah, these are bots or they're paying people to do that. We know that they pay people uh, to tweet. Why would they not pay people for reviews when they're not just doing it with bots? So this stuff is all very, very shady. And I think that's why you see people um, turning to uh, YouTubers and things like that. But even then, you got to be careful with a lot of YouTubers too, because they might be on the docket as well. So it uh, really breaks trust a lot. And uh, I think that's just kind of a symptom of society at large. But let me know what you make of this new report confirming what most of us probably already uh, speculated kind of thought was actually happening in the first place. Subscribe for more.